in March of uh, 1974, I had a Shabbaton in um, Cincinnati. We had kids from Cincinnati and Louisville, Kentucky. It was just what we called a local Shabbaton, which meant it was just me telling stories all Shabbos and a guitar player, um, Harold Fruchter from what was then the Ruach Revival and then Ruach, and he's been a million things. Mm -hmm. uh, now I think he's Cole Chaim, but he's fabulous talent. So Saturday night at one of those things, we take 140 kids to in buses to uh, ice skating, roller skating or whatever. And then we'd go back to the chauffeur comes hits or sloppy joes and pizza and whatever. Cincinnati is in the southwestern corner of Ohio. It's adjacent to Louisville. Even the Cincinnati airport, I mean, not to Louisville, to Kentucky. Even the Cincinnati airport is in Kentucky. Right. Saturday night, we're going bowling or ice skating or whatever. A rainy, miserable night. Okay. I'm in the lead bus. We have four buses. Louis Maltzmacher, who is the president for life of the Hebrew Academy in Cleveland, and at that time was the regional president of NCSY, remembers this incident. Um, we pull up to a corner somewhere in rural Kentucky, and there's a kid standing there, a kid who has what we used to uh, refer to as a Jew-fro, hmm. which is an Afro on a Jew. And in those days, in the 70s, a lot of people, because of the Vietnam War or whatever, a lot of people were wearing uh, those army jackets, fatigue jackets. And he's standing there, he's drenched, and he's hitchhiking. So we're looking at him, he's looking at us. One of the kids on the bus says, I know that kid, he's in my home room. I said, is he Jewish? He said, yeah. I said, let's take him. Mm. So we take him. He comes, wherever it was we went that night, we went bowling or whatever. Then he came back to the show, we had the kumzits, he had a sloppy joe, then whatever. I wouldn't remember this story all these years later, except that one Shabbos, some years ago, a guy comes and knocks on my front door. And he has a whole family with him, and a, one of those double carriages, and a talus zeko, and a hat, and the whole thing. And he came to tell me that story. Hmm. That that, you know. No Jufro anymore? No. And why was he in Pittsburgh that Shabbos? He was considering becoming a Rosh Kolel. Interesting. Okay. So that, you Incredible. know, just, that's it's amazing. You just shlak lach machal pnei You just throw out your bread and something comes back. You guys picked him up and that's. Yeah. And now I mean, it has nothing to do with me. It's just he got into the machine and it's. Uh, so it's, the, it's, the, it's the conductor conducting things. That's what it is. Right. Exactly. 